a uh, very good morning and warm welcome to everyone so i architects nigdha roy welcome you all to the geetam school of architecture webinar series 2022 on the topic of successful career in architecture organized by geetam school of architecture hyderabad and visakhapatnam this platform this webinar series is to invite all the aspiring students of architecture their parents and guardians and mentors and also this webinar consists is uh, held on every saturday sunday uh, and this series will continue till october 2022 so uh, so i uh, with indeed honor uh, like uh, i would also introduce like give a welcome to the director sir professor g sunil kumar sir and now it's time to introduce our guest speaker and today our guest speaker will be architect Mukteshwar Erula sir so a brief introduction about him so architect Mukteshwar Erula sir has completed his BA from CSIIT Hyderabad and masters of city planning from IIT Kharagpur he has over 18 years of experience in the field of architecture interior designing urban planning and worked on many notable projects in India and Bahrain before joining Geetam Hyderabad in 2018 he was senior architect and studio head for CNT Architects Hyderabad projects few of major projects he has handled with CNT and our Oberoi Trident Hotel my escape courtyard villas corporate office for Reddy Labs Zakir Hussain lecture hall complex at University of Hyderabad from 2007 to 2009 he worked with mayfair housing private limited in mumbai and bahrain as an architect and a planner he involved in 60 floor high rise commercial cum residential towers project designed by som architect proposed in bahrain bay presently he is also working on few high residential projects master planning of vemulavad temple area he is also pursuing research program in geetam in the area of energy efficient affordable housing and sir is a uh, associate professor in geetam school of architecture and uh, he is also uh, involved in um, pr practical works also and today we welcome architect mukteshwar erkula sir as a guest speaker for our webinar and let us uh, get exposure like let us know about his journey as an architect as an educator and get exposure to all his works welcome sir on board Thank you, Stigda. Welcome, Mukesh. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor Sunil Sir and the team, Kanaka and uh, Stigda, giving me the opportunity to <clears throat> to uh, so you all know about my journey as an architect and where I started, where I am presently working, and all. so it's my pleasure to um, present you all my journey today let me share my screen in the screen visible yes is yes, clear okay uh, i think there are uh, many students um, in our group and uh, i'm also uh, before i start uh, making my presentation the topic successful career in architecture okay so there is a lot of uh, thought process happening what is exactly all success i have seen many other previous guests talking about success um we are talking about success but the definition keep changing and uh, like uh, it's it's a uh, different perspective from person to person okay so but in general before i enter into the career uh, career of architecture i was just exploring what do you, what the people think what is success in career what is success exactly so i was just exploring some uh 
uh, definitions as well. Okay, what do you, what the people, other people think? Because sorry. yeah, so I was just going through being a research and uh, uh, research scholar, and as a faculty, I was just going through some uh, definitions as well. It is showing a success as an accomplishment of an aim or purpose. It is also showing uh, the attainment of fame, wealth, or social status. But if I further explore, okay, a person or thing that achieves desired aims or attains fame, wealth, etc. If I further explore, doing something that makes you happy and something that you really enjoy. If you achieve what you want to and what you are, what you want to do it and are happy with it. It's a positive outcome after hard effort and useful experience. And it's a feel of satisfaction with what you have and what you are doing now. And doing something you love on a daily basis to achieve a goal that I have set for myself. This is in general, I'm just exploring, but finally I have some, my personal idea of success after you know this, uh, this has changed and shifted during the years after working as an architect. And uh, now I believe the success is not really necessary to having material things or anything that making money. Because while working for more than 18 years of 20 years of experience as an architect, I'm just thinking where I'm heading to, what exactly my profession who is and whom I'm really helping out and what exactly I learned. So it is more about how I can impact and make a positive difference in people's lives. This is, this, I felt it was possible through architecture. So when I joined architecture um, in 1997, I was more um, uh, I was more interested in mathematics and physics and engineering. But I got an opportunity. Somebody inspired me to join architecture because as, as a, um, it's a profession that you can you know, self-sustain. You can give jobs. You can make it. You don't need to depend on anybody to find out jobs and all. So that was few things really inspired me. And also it is uh, like a, uh, some people inspired me that like, you know, it's a creative job, but it is not uh, really, you know, uh, you don't need to depend on um, what do you think, um, uh, uh, too much of technicality or too much of, uh, you know, um, some jobs which are not really, you know, uh, depend on so many people. So as an entrepreneur, my, being a, my father is a businessman. So I always used to think about, okay, uh, while studying, so you can become an entrepreneur as well. So a few things inspired me. And finally, I'm not really passionate before joining architecture, but uh, I can say I'm an accidental architect also. Accidental means somehow joined it and I got a good rank in Nata. Those days is the drawing competition and I joined here. But all these journeys, all these days after working as a 20 years, it is, it is, I can feel that we can make, you know, uh, you know uh, we can impact people's life uh, through the practice and making buildings as well. So it is about how I can inspire and motivate people and give them hope, positivity, hope and positivity. So this is my uh, opinion of the success. So, but when I choose in, when I have chosen architecture profession, the perception changes, the perception versus reality. We always now, I mean, it, it is, it is always a debatable. If you see the figure, then you can understand somebody says three, somebody says four. Okay. So it is, it, it is, it is just like, you know, um, after studying 40 to 50 subjects in our architecture subjects, definitely. Uh, we what we see as when before the student what you see the architecture and before you before I joined architecture and during when I'm studying architecture and after practicing architecture now I'm teaching architecture the perception really keeps changing now okay this is all is all with experience and uh, there's no defined uh, you know a rule that architecture should be like this architect should be like this okay so. Just do what you like. Just you know uh, what you can. Uh, if you're in, then you'll definitely get succeed. And 
the success in different areas of life it's not it's not just uh, you know it's a only it's not just a professional success your life is everybody's every human life is balanced with so many success it's emotional success social success professional financial and community but nowadays the students and uh, the youth is more focusing on the professional or career oriented success okay if you if you, it, it it is very much evident when i'm doing involved in the counseling or uh, counseling uh, sessions on the students that uh, you know students are more joining taking career of computer science or engineering anything just because of the uh, packages uh, the salaries what uh, what they initially they can get okay but if you are really like your profession if you can understand what is architecture if you can understand if you are more um, uh, you know inclined to understand architecture i am sure uh, not only architecture any course you may like it you will definitely like it and i would suggest you choose what you really like it okay so let me focus on the career as an architecture so the architecture if you um, leading to success means then it is more involved in designing planning strategies and innovation analysis and teamwork and end of the day design since you decide to be an architect is is a design oriented care that design is the thing but giving a solution to your, your problem it is not it is wrong i mean sometimes the wrong myth that design is more of more of uh, you know creation and artistic skills but the fundamental uh, the fundamental uh, definition It's a disconnection, it seems. Let us wait, sir. Give yeah, one word for Think, this. Uh, uh, please uh, inform your. But disconnected? Yes. Sir, yes. can you hear me? Right now, yeah, it got disconnected. Share the screen again. Mm -hmm. Your screen is not shared. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Ah, Just yeah. a minute. Sir, you are saying something. Yeah, yeah. For the students who are attending, please uh, inform your friends and ask them to join. We are having an interesting presentation, so please ask all your friends to join. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. One. Sorry, is it disconnected? Hello? Hmm. Is the problem from my end? Uh, you got yeah. disconnected, so just try again. Uh, one minute. Sir, you make are... him co-host co again. Yes. Then yeah, I can... co-host only. He's co-host. Yeah, not a problem. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So in India, when you are chosen as an architect as a career, then these are the major areas that you will be involved. And uh, yeah. please share the screen again. Your screen. screen is not visible, Muktesh. And Muktesh, maybe you can switch off your video. I think the bandwidth is an issue. So switch off your video and then share the screen. Yes, sir, uh, sir is joining now. Okay. Sorry, I am. Let me just connect to my mobile, please. I think uh, there is a network issue. Yeah. Now, now it is correct. So, like sir said, uh, clip the video is. off and then share the screen. Then the will be proper. One. Video, uh, yes. Yeah. Now share the screen. I think uh, bandwidth will be sufficient. Okay. Okay.
So, um, few points I would like to give a message to the students and the interns and the young architects, the budding architects, and some of you um, have joined and have elected, um, decided to be uh, as an architect. So, for them, there are a few messages uh, I'd like to share that uh, you just get a career path that you can learn, you start learning from tips and the freelancing and the competition projects. And if you, if anybody really have not started work on it, just start immediately working on any project, even the students of second year, third year, then really focus on competition projects and that really give you, uh, you know, uh, exact uh, you know, spirit on the competition where you really stand out. So though we all, as, in, as a faculty, we give you, we guide. Uh, I think, sorry, I think it's better. I'll connect to my, please, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, please. I'm sorry, I think it's frequently disconnected. I hope it will be better now. Yeah. Yeah, it's good now, please. Yeah, Go okay. I'm sorry. So, and don't get caught up in a old God forms. Architecture is a course where you um, you know, it, it gives, it gives, uh, you know, uh, more ideas from time to time and don't caught up in a old God forms means like, uh, they don't want really change. They don't want change in any manner. I mean, though they means I'm talking about a firm or maybe the people whom you are associated with. Okay. So most of the firms need to embrace the ideas, energy and enthusiasm of young people. So the People, I mean, the students are the just passed out or who are already pursuing architecture, asso better associated with the people who wants, you know, the new ideas. And if you're working with a large number of team or people are in the office, you, um, you know, just be an observant. There are some, you know, persons who are an all-rounder kind of millennials who can, who can, uh, you know, do so many things in a given time, given task. So in the office environment, just be an observant. So but observant, you will learn a lot also. You may not be able to do it, but really you can, you can follow their works and ideas, their way of working, how they're handling people, how they're handling the office. Okay, so these kind of people, you can just follow them. And networking is more important in my networking is like you know you you deal with so many people so if you get to know everyone in architecture community and relevant allied fields allied fields are there's so many allied fields in architecture including structural designers uh, mep consultants landscape and uh, acoustical consultants. there's so many consultants involved irrespective of their ages and experience please get connected with them and don't underestimate the value of professional bodies. The professional bodies, there are different professional bodies in architecture and the relevant field. So <clears throat> opportunities will really help us uh, in, in the profession. And um, you can get a lot of opportunities as well with the uh, networking. And uh, very important, don't get upset by the clients that they think they know everything about architecture. 
So the architecture, uh, comparing to other professionals, unfortunately, is a generalized subject in the sense who the clients can talk about the architecture also, but don't really get upset. Be patient, first listen to them what they really want and try to educate and show multiple options. It is always as a, when you're practicing as an architect, you, um, you get, you get tend to revise the drawings, which you already done. And, but if you're following a process and you can still with following a process in a patient manner, you can handle the client and first educate them what they really want. Get the design brief from the client very clearly before you start any work. So if you're very professional, then you don't really get upset by any of the clients. The clients will not be like what you <laughs> The clients are always like, they will try to get the work done from you, what they exactly want. Sometimes they're misguided also. And remember that your educator is an architect and he is not educated as an architect, please. And don't burn the bridges. It's a very small world. It's a very small world and the architecture world is a very small world. Whatever you're doing, whatever the actions that you're taking and decisions you're taking is always remembered. So it, it, it means any kind of relationship in the field of architecture that makes a lot of, you know, if you have any uh, good or bad relationship, you will be remembered and easily spread out. The bad is always easily spread out, easily comparing to the good. So, and look out for the number one, always your, it is because it's your career and, and yours alone, please. Nobody really will influence on your career. They may influence for a positive manner, but not in never a negative manner. So make sure that you are getting appropriate experience and kind of internship or any kind of learning developments and opportunities and compensation. The compensation part is most important in the architecture field. And if you're not getting appropriate, any appropriately uh, relevant or not up to your satisfaction, think about yourself again, Otherwise, you just move on. Don't stuck in the same way. I mean, where you are already, you know, stuck. Uh, don't stuck in the way where you really don't like it. Voice your opinions. If you uh, design is always a debatable to topic. Uh, like I shown in the earlier figure, somebody says yes, three or somebody says four. But the best ideas never incorporate into projects unless they are heard, presented, and defended. Even for the students, sometimes you need to discuss and convince the, the uh, convince your guide or mentor what exactly your uh, idea shows. It is, it is not, architecture is not just talked by words. You have to work and present. You have to work the presentation or the solution what you are giving it should be really you know, uh, expressed in a proper way. And many processes and firms in a, and details on projects can be improved if you simply point out, a, point out a better solution to decision makers. So it is a tendency that any senior architect, any person uses a tendency that he, you know, unless you give him a better idea, generally they don't hear you. So you have to be very prepared, very well, work out very well in the details and raise your voice that this is the right option and uh, any improvements always appreciated by the principal architects or the clients any improvements and you must design your career and position all of everybody is unique in this world but unique in the job positions unique people unique kind of work culture so continually reflect on your experiences to determine what you really want to do and take your career decisions to attain this position. So any position you want to take your proper decisions, whether if you can understand your strengths very well, then you can take a, a real decisions, what exactly you want to do. And differentiate yourselves and develop your unique skills and abilities, demonstrate how they make you better employer contributor. So for students also, my advice is to, Everybody is, since everybody is unique, you can differentiate yourself first. What exactly you are, what kind of you know, uh, strengths you make, make out and utilize your skills properly and show off what exactly you're, you're unique to in a class. So that is how you can differentiate. And don't confuse an internship with full-time employment. So this is a message to the internship. 
students so they don't uh, you know sometimes uh, you can't understand what is internship and what is full time employment so inter this internship only introduce you all kind of work culture and the firm and the procedures in architecture so but the full time employment is gives you a lot of responsibilities and uh, you know you know productivity responsibilities and all however it is very tough to differentiate what it, uh, you know there is a thin line but it all depends on what kind of responsibilities you take up so always full time employment is kind of stress is because you are given deadlines and responsible internship is more of learning so if you if you really show your learning skills and keen on following your you know mentor or the principal architect then you'll learn more and you may have to spend a lot of time you know enthusiasm showing your enthusiasm in learning as well the technology will lead the way so, so definitely we are the people we in the sense i'm talking about the people who worked in 2000 to 2005 uh, 2000 maybe in 2007 we have witnessed the transition from manual drafting to uh, you know autocad and the um, uh, any kind of technology related the digital drafting so we after this stage now i don't think so any manual drafting firms are really working well but now it is this is a time that you have to learn more softwares which are relevant to your field which will give you more presentation more uh, you know uh, detailing uh, skills particularly the cad sketcher beam photoshop and uh, any kind of rendering software so i have seen uh, many cg works so whatever the your whatever you have your ideas that you know the graphic work will really give you a very good name and fame as well so that will show off exactly what your ideas and um, sustainability sustainability is opportunity please so it is it is actually in any project it, it may be a project or practice you can talk it sustainable matter every time and for students you can become a lead green associate during your school now uh, even in the i think right, as third year or if you are in the fourth year you can try for a green associate as well you need not be a champion of sustainable environment but you must educate everyone about the sustainability so in future the sustainability has you know the, the clients will have you know more demand for the sustainability and build your community like uh, only 2% of the as per my studies the only 2% people can afford the service of architects so the 98% of people may not afford but you can get involved with the people and community and educate that your services will be beneficial Uh, to their project and education really does not end in the school it is a continuation process and what you're studying in, in, in during your five years will definitely give you exposure uh, to all kind of subjects but um, you need to understand more from learning from the practice or from different materials and the systems and technology while you're working so don't stop your learning if you know a planning means it's not like stopping your learning and become a mentor also sometimes the teaching uh, you know the you teach your next generation if you are becoming more, more senior try to teach try to experience try to share your experiences to the next generation you will always look up and look back so you learn and you will teach you learn and teach that's how we you know in geetham school of architecture most of our faculty is also practicing architects and turn teachers we call it as a practicing so so it's it's really help us where you really uh, no it, it really help us to learn some new process as well so never get grumpy continually be inspired by the next generation and harness their optimism energy be a positive and optimistic employee or working environment where and that you can fix something there is the world is full of problems so choose one or two things and fix them so this is i am talking about the design this is not i am talking related to uh, any other things so there are some problem that you can fix you can pick up also 
there are some firms who really work on uh, you know, corporate social responsibility as well. So they get involved. They get involved into the public issues and give some solution. They involved. So you can be involved in this kind of problems. So we cannot depend on each and every government to do all these activities. And the complete the task. Now you are already set out to become an architect. So just take a COA membership compulsory and many people, many architects generally do oh, kind of, you know, they don't really understand the importance of COA, it's Council of Architects. So complete this task as soon as you finish the graduation. And the final thought is the easiest building to design is a box. Anybody can just, just design a box. But architects don't really tend to design boxes unless the client wants. That is the different. That is a different, uh, you know, requirement. But it is about serving others through the design of the built environment. Make sure your work is the best. It can be through its service to others and contribution to a more sustainably built environment. So, these are few, uh, you know, important messages I would like to share with you all, the students and the young architects, before. Uh, I get into this. I, this is my journey as an architect, urban planner, and an academician. So this is a broad outline of my career. Did my architecture in 2002. The left-hand side shows some of my year-wise experience, and the right side, it will show you my accumulated experience when I joined this firm in 2002. In 2003, you can see the locations where I worked in, uh, you know, 2002 to three worked in a Hyderabad architect consultants where I did one, one and a half years job there. And every firm, wherever I worked it. So I did my, actually, in fact, I did my training in the same firm, architect consultants, and they continued the same job uh, in, uh, in the architect consultant. There, I have learned a lot about Vastu because I didn't know about before. In, in During studies, during my education, really, we were not taught about Vastu. But when I joined any office, it was in Hyderabad, particularly. 90% of the planning is, is oriented, designed by the Vastu in Hyderabad, I can say. So when we joined there, so it is a new subject again. It took some time for me. but because I worked here, I could understand the concepts of Vastu and particularly I was involved in more of residential projects for more than one, one and a half years. Then these Vastu concepts really helped me to work any kind of projects in Hyderabad. So I, after that, I worked with um, designer web, architect Manoj Wahi. He was, I can say he was my first mentor or uh, where I could inspire so many things from him. What uh, he, I can say, he could uh, you know unlock my powers. I unlock my skills as well. So I spent about uh, two years with him, and uh, in two years, I could. I think I remember I could uh, complete more than five six projects. So mostly I was involved in the interior designing of very large scale projects. Actually, before joining the firm, I was not really you no. Know, I, I I was not really confident that I can. You know, complete these kind of projects. So, particularly the cognitive technologies and um, Satyam project, and there are a uh, few more uh, software firms in 2004 time I have handled very well and I felt very confident. So, after this, I got uh, um, you know, opportunity to join uh, you know, to IIT Karakpur, but this was a very crucial time for me because by the time I was working in very uh, large scale projects. I was learning and I was also, you know, in comparatively, I was earning a little, little bit better. So it, I, 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 cra I wanted to do masters, but uh, I was not very sure what exactly I wanted to do. But uh, I, I, I cracked gate, All India rank about uh, around 64. Then um, it was in a dilemma whether should I continue my. Uh, the practice are to join uh, <clears throat> masters, but it was an opportunity to joining IIT definitely really motivated me that uh, the way you know I have seen the campus and then 
then i decided to become a planning i really did, i really don't know about planning but i wanted to masters masters that time there was only one course available in karakpur so i joined it this this the two years of study really helped me to you know broaden my views and perspectives and dealing with people all over india with my small class of 20 people so but uh, that helped me uh, helped me a lot in maturing my thoughts and broaden my views as well so i got uh, placements in uh, sorry uh, while working in karakpur i was working under the hod on few projects there and i got an opportunity to work on the hyderabad master planning the capacity building of municipal corporation of hyderabad uh, area so so is by the time i was five years experience overall so i was i was able to handle small small projects uh, you know um, when i was given opportunity you know, opportunity to work on and uh, from there i joined uh, i got an opportunity to work in ajmer mai for a global reality in mumbai where i initially i was joined as a business analyst in planning in planning is more of analysis based course so it is the architecture is very less but your architecture knowledge was useful but it anal analysis based and uh, strategic planning related based uh, study so i joined uh, ajmer am fair for their project uh, proposed project in bahrain so uh, you know initially i was joined a business analyst and then turned to be architect and planner there so and then i worked for one more year in delhi with one of my close friend he started his firm i associated with him and then i got an opportunity to join cnt architects cnt is one of the oldest firms in uh, india there are many architects uh, famous architects who worked with cnt that time i got an opportunity so if i find if i see you know during my journey i was working one year there two years here then suddenly when i got a call from cnt then i thought i should join there i it, the project was very good and very good in the sense of the it's challenging project it was a project in hyderabad anyway i was planning to move from delhi to hyderabad me and my wife are architects so suddenly we thought we changed our plans and uh, came back to hyderabad to join cnt and the project was challenging for me till then i worked on so many projects but this project of trident was challenging so i thought of taking up that challenge so initially it was very tough for me to handle the project but uh, slowly uh, you know uh, while you know spent lot of time so many night outs so many days understanding the project handling people there so in 2005 to 2015 the the journey of with cnt is really helped me a lot to become mature in you know architecture and also in planning and coordination mainly particularly in coordinating uh, with the various consultants in large you know, handling large scale project later on while i'm working with cnt uh, my wife was have you know established a firm called arfa architects and planners then when i quit cnt then join take up as a uh, arfa architects and planners and handle many projects in to the state government and mostly where i was working i was handling more of residential projects so and then in 2018 till that i joined uh, associate professor with uh, professor mohan sir you know motivated me that we can teach and practice so that was the key motivation to join me as the, you know in geetam uh, in 2018 so i would like to explain few of my projects only um uh, comparing to uh, there are so many projects but uh, um, um some everything is i felt like an opportunity only it is not like while you working with uh, uh, so many people every person in your life you get some opportunity please so that opportunity is is really dependent on so many factors that can be your knowledge and that can be your no you know honesty or uh, that can be your commitment to your work and so many factors so i got an opportunity while i am working with uh, uh, ajmera mayfair global reality in mumbai so in mumbai i joined mumbai there to be uh, you know as a business analyst for their projects but after working for a month then i got an opportunity to 
uh, you know, been a team of uh, international projects there. There is a big team actually. So I was supposed to work under the CEO of the project. See, he's the CEO. It's I was hardly five years experience at that time, and the project is so huge an international project. I never got any kind of you know exposure experience, but uh, my study in you know Karapur helped me like you know become how to you know it, it's like a uh, maturity in you know, way of uh, maturity in handling people and the projects as well. So uh, it's a it's a project called Bahrain Bay, and uh, the Bahrain uh, is a, one of the Gulf countries, and SOM of New York was the principal architect for the master plan, and this company called Ajmera Mayfair uh, is uh, Mumbai based. They bought a purchased a plot in Bahrain. So the Bahrain uh, is about uh, a very small country, uh, about 760 square meters, hardly uh, area equal in the area of the municipal corporation Hyderabad, maybe around part of Hyderabad. And it has 1.2 million population there. And this project is located on the northern side of the Bahrain. And it is called Manama Bay. And um, <clears throat> so the master plan area is about uh, 332, um, th sorry, th 332, um, 3,32,299 square meters is about, uh, I remember around 80 acres something. It's not so huge, but the project is prestigious for the government. Most of the projects handled there, uh, most of the project created by the governments there itself, comparing to, you know, in India, we more private uh, comparing to the India, the projects are led by the private people. So, but this was the agreement taken from by the uh, Ajmera Mayfair uh, reality with the Bahrain government. So, I was appointed when I was appointed as an architect and the planner. I was the first employee. To Sorry to interrupt. Them. Your screen sharing is stopped. Reshare again once. Stopped? Huh? Sorry. Uh, no. Share it again. Yes, one more time. Yeah, screen share. It's working for us. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now it's okay? Yes, yes, visible. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. So this is about um, um, Bahrain Bay project. Uh, um, so one of my key responsibilities uh, to join, uh, when I joined uh, uh, the Ajmera Mayfair Global Reality, so I was supposed to study about the project, the feasibility reports. In planning, we do the feasibility reports, feasibility and the real estate, understand the real estate scenario and uh, more of uh, you know, analytical based uh, studies. So having an architecture background with some experience of three years, and um, um, having a planning uh, background. So they have given me some kind of multitasking. It's not uh, limited to one area of working. Uh, since I was a first employee of this project, there is no limitations to me and there is no limitation to the kind of responsibilities that I have to take up. So then I was sent to Um, I, I was sent to Bahrain from Mumbai to Bahrain. I used to travel from Bahrain to Mumbai uh, one, one month here, one month there. Some of the major team is in, in major team is in Mumbai. So that I was the person to go there and study some given task kind of feasibility related studies. The feasibility is nothing but market survey kind of analysis. Since they have bought a plot of, you know, I think about one, 1.25 acres, 5,300 square meters. So there is they are planning to invest about more than thousand crores of rupees there. So it was the planner role or architect and planner role to give a uh, understand, study and understand the product mix there. What kind of building we should uh, you know build there. So this kind of feasibility studies I was involved there, and uh, and this is the project proposed tower which they want as from the master plan. So. This is a master plan. 
the master plan area is uh, about 330000 square feet it is completely the landfill area in the manama bay it's not on the natural ground so and uh, this plot is of about uh, 5300 square meters and i think some more 1500 square meters was added at later stage since uh, we bought it uh, and um, uh, this as per the master plan this is a proposal of mixed use the mixed use of uh, it can be built uh, by residential and commercial and uh, uh, retail as well so um, the initial study was supporting supporting and uh, more encouraging to go for the mixed use as per the master plan as well so the next stage was to give the um, uh, what do you call um, what what best how much what is the maximum area that we can build based on the gra gross uh, gross floor area given by the master plan or the SOM. So we were also doing some kind of uh, study and based on that we have developed some product mix. This product mix is arrived for me to uh, make a design brief report also. I I was involved in the design brief report of the. Um, design brief report is nothing but uh, you have to give you have to give a uh, detailed brief to the architect so before i we give uh, <clears throat> before i give it to the report to the architect i have studied so many projects in bahrain and dubai as well so i used to travel to so these are like to do the competitive analysis of the what happening around the projects within bahrain and some projects in dubai so based on that the architect uh, have decided to make the massing studies and it was about 25 percent we wanted to go for the retail area and the some part of the amenities area and most 80 percent for the residential areas so it's only to brief there is a very you know huge studies involved in this project and one more important thing is when i joined there there was no any consultant and it was very tough to you know appoint consultant there because you need to study but because the consultant will be working on a major project the challenging project the first time for this client so we were doing a lot of scrutiny of the worldwide consultants like SYM, Yamasaki, Atkins and uh, Adas so we were only looking for the renowned reputed architects all over the world so finally because the SOM is already worked on the master planning, so we were inclined. We I used to make some kind of analysis why we have why we have to choose different kind of architects, on what basis we are you know selecting, and we make some SWOT analysis. So who is best and what? and finally the financial proposal as well. So in this process, I had to I used to interact with every architect. So how they are you know really working, and on what basis. On what basis generally uh, they're uh, they're really handling these kind of large-scale projects with international clients so my role uh, sincerely involved in the feasibility reports and market survey on the completed projects and appointing all kind of consultants to be on board there is a lot of process happens because it is involved with money and responsibility as well and uh, i was also involved in some kind of due diligence of the um, project due diligence of the um, land related matters so there is no limitations to me but uh, i i felt sometimes you may be you know oh, I, I might be a little you know down what i'm doing sometimes but every day of my experience really helped me in all kind of you know work experience because it is not uh, it, it is not like you know uh, uh, when you're dealing with so many international architects, there is a uh, lot of process involved in it. And also without hampering the teamwork and the smooth coordination more important. So, and uh, I was, I felt a little successful that the design which I have given used by the famous architects. So definitely, okay, whatever I have studied is you know, using in the project of this 60 floor tower. And, I was also involved in the pro overall project schedules and coordinating all the consultants, making minutes of meeting reports and guiding the entire team, the marketing team and the uh, design team and the construction team. There are three teams for there. I was I was part of the design and the project coordination team. And we used to study the technical review of the design drawings. 
that was a main key takeaways I have taken from the Bahrain Bay project. And that really helped me to give exposure to uh, international way of working, how they work on the, the large scale projects. Then I joined uh, CNT in 2010. I would like to you know, give only two examples of my past experience because these are the major projects that really helped me in various uh, aspects of learnings in architecture and uh, um, architecture and design career. So I traveled with, I, I associated with CNT for uh, approximately five years. And uh, within five years, I was involved in majority of architectural projects. And the Trident and Oberai was the long term I have spent in more than three and a half years. I remember starting from foundation till the completion of the project. So, so when I joined the project, the stage of the project was a little hectic. The sorry, uh, I, let me continue. The, and then I, I I have also completed some lectural complex in University of Hyderabad. All the projects, mostly I'm involved starting from mending the Ready Labs project in the Banjara Hills Road number two corporate office next to TV in office. When I joined, it was the architecture, architectural building is almost about to finish, but in, I'm involved more of the interiors and coordination. The MyScape courtyard villas, one of the luxury villas in the Hyderabad. So I was involved almost 90 and starting from end of the project, almost 90% of the project was involved, coordinated, and it was a successful project uh, for a builder. And one more project, uh, private 28 nearby, uh, it's also a residential project, Villas, in the Coca Pit. And one more interior project I involved in the Rai Durgam area and DBSU building in Mindtree. So this journey with CNT for more than five years, uh, completing some of the notable projects in Hyderabad, and uh, the Trident, most of it, it's a actual 3D image. I don't have actual pics now, but um, so this was uh, initially, uh, the concept was designed by SCDA from Singapore. So it, the design started in 2007. I remember 2007, yeah. So they have taken uh, more than two years to complete the conceptual design. And the site is next to Shilpa Ramam. And it was, Part of the uh, it, it's part of the Shilparamam of four, about four acres. Uh, there are two buildings, one the Trident, another actually if you see you can see the combined building Trident and Overai, both. But presently the only one building executed. I remember one minute. Yeah, you can see the right hand side was about uh, Trident uh, Hotel, which is completed one. So when I joined this project uh, in 2010, there are no any, any kind of working drawings. There is no any coordinated drawings, but uh, um, because of so many reasons, they had a problem with the concept architects. The client had some sort of you know, conflict with the concept architects from Singapore. This client, the, the architect stays in Singapore, but we, as a local architect, we are responsible. We took responsibility to handle the entire project of, you know, is about, uh, I remember is about uh, 17 lakh square feet, approximately, and more than three basements plus more than 20 floors, 60 meters high. Uh, so not 60 meters, I think around 120. Okay, so 60. <clears throat> so you were supposed, I was supposed to be the local architect, the local architect role, is in such a way that you will be dealing with every consultant and every including the contractor and the client that any drawing comes to the site or the project it will be reviewed by this uh, local architect and get it approved by the local architect and the drawing is released to the good for construction so my uh, major role was to um develop the concept drawings to the construction drawing there are so many drawings. i remember more than more than 2000 drawings we were supposed to do it so um in the the, the set of drawings released from the uh, concept architects was very very minimal minimal in the sense not really coordinated well so um after struggling for more than three months then we decided that we will also develop we will develop 
because we don't want to give up on the project. My uh, uh, the chief architect of CNT was very clear that we are going to handle it. There is no, we are not going to get back because whatever the problem we had with the, whatever the problem the client had with the principal architect, but we are going to solve it. We are not going to give up. So that kind of situation when I was joined in this project, so we were around four members of team. I think uh, I, uh, that time Suman was on board. Suman was my studio head that time. So uh, with him, around four people were working on this project. And um, <clears throat> we read, we, uh, within six months, it is under control only because of the situation that we have very well maintained with it, all kind of documentation and the drawing protocols and uh, uh, dealing with the clients and other vendors as well. So, so within, I remember within three to six months, we could be able to complete this project, uh, you know, documentation. Then the work started going smoothly and we were also a little bit involved in all kind of, you know, uh, you know uh, involved in some sort of interior kind of concepts as well. Then it came under control. There are so many consultants. I think uh, there are one con one structural consultant, and there are two MEP consultants in the landscape. From mostly are from outside, out of Hyderabad, and every work used to happen online in the sense through mails, and you know, used to do the conference call kind of thing. So, and even because it's a hotel, so much of services involved, so much, so many of uh, you know uh, services involved, and the. The, the coordination between uh, architectural design and services is always a tough situation because, uh, you know, uh, the services consultants require a lot of space as well. Everything is may not be predicted in the architectural design. So we, we somehow we could manage very well and that happened only with the teamwork and it's only happened with the proper documentation we used to do it. The detailing part was very clear and uh, um when you receive so many directions so many drawings from various consultants so it it was become uh, you know uh, very tough for us but still we have given a lot of drawing protocols to each and every consultants how they are supposed to submit to us and this is all the process and then we could be able to handle the project with okay and finally it went well but because of the some clients situation clients uh, financial issues the Oberai could not take off in i think uh, there are uh, there are some issues in the financial matters as well that we are not involved in but uh, this project of trident obrai gave me a lot of learnings and um, particularly particularly in coordination the architect role is not just limited to the drawing and designing please the architect role more of you know coordinating with the team of many consultants on board when you grow up and when you the project is scaled up, your role, the architect role, becomes more challenging as well sometimes. And uh, but whatever the case, it was um, with, the, with the proper patience and with, if you are disciplined very well, then you can handle any kind of project. Discipline in terms of the drawings and the documentation. After uh, CNT, then I was more involved in. Um, projects in more of uh, residential projects of you know which uh, you know I started uh, working or as a my own projects so there are a few clients in the last 10 years i have owned my some of my own clients one of my own client is aramita projects so i started working with the client but most of the projects in hyderabad are vasu based related and mostly you know commercially viable kind of projects in uh, kind of apartments. I would like I would like to go through some of the projects I handled. It is a very small, it's not a very big project, but uh, it's about three thousand five hundred less than one acre, I think. So this was my initially initial first project. I can say in two thousand well two thousand fourteen, I started while working with CNT. I just took the feasibility studies and all. Then, uh, yeah, uh, this is the one. Yeah. Then one more project of uh, you know one acre site of area is about seventy flats. So mostly financially become uh, viable for them. Financial sorry uh, financially success 
fully uh, marketing point of view they were very successful and they can they could sell it off very well with the planning and um, the client is also happy the most of the satisfaction gives to the architect is when you get the same uh, when you get the projects from the similar clients so uh, so uh, this client uh, you know repeatedly started giving us the projects so we were also fine and of post construction also we used to visit the projects how they are you know experiencing it all so it was very old but don't have all the all the recent pics but um, i could take up some of the projects so i was after that i was associated with uh, um, bangalore based architect uh, library design studio in after uh, completing cnt so i was involved in one more high rise projects my role was limited for one year i think one one and a half years approximately so this is also built uh, near uh, financial district so i was dealing uh, was dealing uh, this project as a local architect is about 14 floors uh, tower and 45 high end villas each floor one apartment and each floor uh, each core one apartment means about uh, uh, three apartments in one floor so uh, each flat of around 4500 square feet is uh, a big areas um, and uh, this client uh, the myscape client uh, i worked in another villa project with them uh, so it was easy for me to you know understand client's requirement so we could i, I was also involved in the statutory approvals and uh, it is important for an architect to understand the local bylaws so after working for more than 10 years in hyderabad then i'm 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 able to handle and guide the principal architects uh, about the local bylaws and uh, about uh, nbc norms as well so this project is successfully completed in i think the 2018 to the 19 time and one more uh, client of the same client of rmkar projects is a small apartment project and uh, is also similar client so there are continuously i was working on the apartments of uh, you know the similar clients uh, in manikonda area presently also i'm working with them it's a small tiny project uh, tiny site a small site in tirupati of i remember around uh, 300 square yards i remember so uh, this was one more small challenging project for me uh, because within uh, in the small site the client was asking about uh, you know some still plus 5 uh, and also the areas are very small but uh, some uh, you know finally we could achieve the the desired areas desired planning and all so my scope was to uh, take up architectural and structural design as well i i used to i, I appoint one structural consultant and uh, one more apartment project completed in nalagon nalaganla is about uh, I think before just before joining geetam is about to finish that was under construction that time and this is also small uh, you know 600 square yards apartment so if you observe i think when i was involved in residential projects started slowly the most of the clients related uh, you know uh, to residential and apartment i am getting more you know opportunities to work on the residential projects so in any kind you can knowingly unknowingly will become a specialized areas uh, you know particularly it can be residential or hospital projects or hospitality related projects or maybe commercial maybe academic projects there are many architects settled or uh, you know with their experience become specialized or take up specialized project like this so i feel i am more confident in handling the more of residential projects so one by one when i am doing residential projects then suddenly i got an opportunity to work for a, because i was involved in the university of hyderabad so i got an opportunity to handle master planning master planning of a, a university in karnool so this i remember this was in 2017 i remember so they called me and this um, given a brief about the plan then i was associated with one bangalore based architect so he was my old friend so we thought of handling this project and we have given 
a initial concept of you know is about 150 acres is a urdu university after separation from telangana the andhra pradesh doesn't have urdu university so they have allocated this site in karnool uh, it's i remember it's a village called orokal the nearby the karnool um, uh, airport so uh, my uh, uh, we have taken more than i think 5 6 months i remember around 5 6 months we studied that uh, planning area and given more so many proposals it was only to give a master planning and proposals it is not to fit into the design execution projects so we have given the zoning plans various zoning plans and land use plan and the conceptual views of this area in of this site so it gave me a lot of you know insights and the experience that how how you know particularly uh, is, uh, when we are dealing with uh, academic projects um, when we are dealing with the uh, vice chancellor kind of people so their aspirations are a little bit uh, you know uh, high level and uh, we used to we used to you know get more of more more knowledge from them as well what exactly they want what students want so using our experience of uh, you know planning skills and we finally submitted them they were happy with this after this the project did not take off or maybe because of the government rules somebody on the government agents are executing i remember so and in 2016 i got an opportunity to work with the uh, telangana government somehow i got a call from because of my master planning background somebody referred me so so I, I was involved in uh, Vemlauda Temple, uh, Vemlauda Temple related uh, project. I was involved in only initial master planning just to give some proposals and all. But uh, it finally, finally it went to you know uh, appoint me as an architect them and given many presentations. But it was very uh, challenging for me because uh, we never had any temple related studies we had studied in you know temple architecture in some of one of the one of the uh, <clears throat> semesters but not like a detailing planning we, we never studied but uh, using only planning skills and the uh, um, we can we can develop any kind of you know projects we have the finally we used to appoint one stapatis over the temple architects and also there are some team of uh, you know vastu uh, consultants who have uh, the client have appointed then i was coordinating with the team to uh, you know finalize the master plan it was only initial master plan submitted to the telangana government and reviewed by the cm two three times and still in proposal stage uh, i'm hopeful this will also take up soon so but uh, after seeing yadadri um, uh, involved by architect Madhusudan and uh, the um, Anand Sai, the designer. So after seeing this, it is architects can handle the projects uh, smoothly, any kind of projects. If you know the subject, if you are involved in some of the uh, some of the terminology and uh, in, in temple architecture as well, and if you are involved in understanding the basic concepts then we can also handle it very well. So I have appointed one sir, temple architect. He's designing the, wherever there is a temple features uh, related aspects are there. But rest of the buildings, like, uh, you know, if you see the, you know, <coughs> the Kalyanakata and Q complex and the Prasadhan complex, these are not, not directly related with the, um, Agam Shastra, anything related with Agam Shastra. So rest of the building we can handle. I felt I'm confident that we can do it. So we am still working on it. And hopefully, if any con basic the master plan is frozen, then we can uh, work in detail the team of people. So I in fact uh, this part is executed based on my master plan. This uh, bund part is executed on site. The rest of the 35 acres is supposed to be uh, you know finalized by the government. And one more master plan I have given for Kondagat uh, to Temple. So it, actually, this is like a reference. One project when I've involved in small subject, they gave me a reference to 
another authority that you know okay when they are satisfied then only I, they can they could refer me so this was referred to another uh, project uh, of Pandagatu. they have it's a very interesting site there so out of my experience i have after consulting with the uh, endowment department i have submitted one master plan uh, before submitting there is a surveying uh, surveying i have done Sir, not the uh, not only the physical survey but also the uh, surveying of the footfall the pilgrim footfall pilgrim patterns how many people year wise season wise so based on that we we can you know we have arrived some requirements to the project and the challenging uh, of for me the challenging was the client never gives me the requirements in the public i mean public related projects because they we were supposed to study the requirements based on the issues into the project issues or uh, whatever the requirements some requirements understanding by the people so finally after more than six months of discussion some master plan is frozen i'm hopeful it will be finalized by them so waiting for the approval one project presently i'm working on i think there are two projects but i have one project presently i'm working um, the last month, uh, around uh, six months back, I have given the feasibility, and uh, it's a basement plus G plus uh, eight <coughs> project is about one acre site, with the residential project again. Um, some of our students also involved in the internship in this project. Um, uh, they have developed the Revit model and BIM model to this project, and um, presently it is under construction. It is about uh, 92 flats, basement plus G plus eight. Um, hopefully it will be finished in another one year. So out of all this, uh, my long journey of 20 years, 18 years plus two years of my master's, um, finally what I understand when you're practicing as an architect, mostly you will be working in you know, you know, long hours and uh, you're committed. When you're committed to any kind of projects, when you get an opportunity, don't lose them. So any kind of opportunity, though it is, you know, maybe in the project or people or networking. So most of the times I use very well and uh, still we are getting some, you know, new proposals, but the challenging is always in the architecture is to, you know, um, uh, the amount of time what you spend should really pay you off. So that calculation will be, always improvise from person to person from time to time. So this uh, one more project I'm working on um, uh, high rise towers in Patanchiru. We don't have any visuals here, but uh, that is also presently on hold. So I, that's why I could not share anything about it. So I'm hopeful that will take off very soon. And the finally, after working on various projects, then I, I have developed this kind of philosophy. So if anybody asks me what is your best project, they definitely I would say the next one. Some architect called Emilio Embas, he mentioned some philosophy. I think that suits to me as well, because when the design, which the, the, the project which I worked in 2010, the project which I'm working today, is there is a lot of drastic uh, you know improvements and changes and. Um, you know, the maturity that I can see myself, the reflection uh, I can see myself. So definitely any project, I will try my best. I'm trying my best. And uh, definitely the next one will be the better one. That is a philosophy I've developed and uh, going on now. And also, I'm like I said, I've, you know, I'm involved in the research project, which I'm more focusing on the residential, uh, eco-friendly and uh, uh, affordable housing projects so that is my uh, overall journey as a an architect and planner in the academician now thank you thank you very much thank you muktesh for a wonderful presentation <clears throat> and um, as a teacher you started off with uh, uh, the presentation on success uh how uh, someone has to uh, catch the path of success your direction 
uh, your orientation was very good uh, and very unique presentation that we have seen in the last one month very unique presentation and the experience working with uh, uh, government that is a very very different uh, challenge area and i see the patience that you are having in the last four years that i've been associated with you i see that you are pursuing them and uh, definitely uh, as an architect no, we should pursue these projects of public interest because as professional we can add value to the money being spent it is the people's money that is being spent and uh, as a professional when we add value to that i think we all should be very happy all architectural fraternity should be happy that we have done something for the society the society's money that we have done effectively and efficiently so that 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 is one uh, very important thing any architect whenever it he gets a chance no you should do that i'm very happy that you are uh, taking up that challenge and you have been pursuing that congratulations on that yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, I think Sunil sir was also part of one meeting in Dharmapuri. He was here witnessing what exactly, how they behave. Behave, yeah. I can't say it's behave, how they don't know exactly yes. what kind of, uh, how to handle the project. But yes. we were supposed to deal with all kind of people. Yes. We have to understand what is their pain. So, so that was challenging. And I remember the proposals given to GHMC on landscaping also. Landscaping also given. Yes, yes sir. It did not execute. Actually, we have given the proposal. It did not execute. I and know. there was so many challenges. It's not time-consuming challenges. Yes. It's, it's not like an exact design challenge. Design challenge, we are always ready to take up. Yes. But if they can't uh, understand very well what we are giving. The value of time. Yes. The value of time and even the drawing sometimes. Then very rare cases I give up. But uh, that was an extreme case recently. I just left it. Yes. I think uh, Shaman sir is also part of it, <laughs> one of the GHMC parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, the major challenges I personally faced and many people also facing is that uh, the client will not understand your time. You have to educate. You have to, you know, um, what do you call, uh, show off or you can um, value your, your time. And uh, that is always challenging. Still, we are learning. Still, we are learning how to handle the clients. Yes. Mm. No, like, uh, see, when we see successful projects like Kashi Vishwanath Dham and then the Karya <coughs> Kartavya Pat yesterday, what uh, Mr. Modi has launched. So uh, those are all uh, the projects that inspire architects to work with governments. Isn't it? Yeah, Finally, we will be adding value to the society. That is what... Uh, uh, is the big thing that we should be doing. So definitely we should not lose hope and we should try. If I am not involved, some non-architects is involved. That was the situation yes, happened. Yes, yes, that yes. was a situation happening also in uh, today's world. So yes. that is injustice to the projects. Yes. And many of my friends in Bangalore are taking up uh, government projects as a responsibility as well. They are yes. taking extra time some mm. uh, 10 20 percent of extra time they are identifying the problem they are giving solution to the government as well yeah so, in one of your uh, um, uh, what do you say in the in the presentation you said we should fix problems so <laughs> yeah so this is one area uh, where everyone every one of us all the architects have a role there are so many problems uh, built environment problems uh, that we are facing as a society mm. and we should Try to fix those problems. That's true, sir. And one, yeah. Yes, students, any questions to uh, architect Muktesh, please? Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> firstly, I would like to thank uh, architect Mukteshwar, sir, for inspiring thoughts on the subject and uh, how he briefed firstly gave us uh, his definition about successful career in architecture and then giving us a broad, uh, broad detail in uh, one slide about his journey from architecture student to practice mm. then uh, to um, then uh, pursuing masters and then he's also an academician planner and an architect both 
so it was very inspiring and a uh, very detailed presentation how you had represented each of the element like um, everything was being said in a very detailed manner and uh, it gave us a very uh, new dimension and perception to all of us so i really thank you sir so much for uh, this this was very much needed for all of us and for inspiring us so much and uh, so uh, i would invite all the students to um, ask questions because uh, just feel free to ask questions yeah <laughs> All the students. Yesterday, yesterday, Yashasvi was asking uh, uh, that <laughs> about about financial needs. Uh, so this is actually uh, yesterday. I was talking. I was about to answer, but uh, this is a myth. I can say it's a myth only, but also is reality. If you are neglected, definitely is a reality. If you are slightly neglected. Even during the studies or after immediate studies also, if you are not really focused on 20 points, which I am really, you know, uh, told you, at least you follow 50%, then you'll become, you know, up, you'll find the way to success. So in our days, I think Sunil sir is most senior to us. There was the information was very mm -hmm. limited and it was manual working. And uh, reaching to this stage, sir, or Shaman sir, Kanaka, this stage itself, I feel is a success. That's, there is no doubt about it. Yes. Because uh, it, it was very tough. It was very tough to convince uh, clients with quick, re quick revisions after making a lot of so many night out drawings. And you need to make changes, which is manual. So, but uh, now the students have every uh, information on the tips. Mm -hmm. So, use your technology very well so uh, students uh, just uh, understand where you are really standing now and uh, definitely you will become successful in career yeah thank you mukteshwar sir i was uh, witnessing career growth at every stage right uh, 1997 we both were together and mm -hmm. Uh, somehow, like uh, both of our career paths were parallel but in a different direction altogether. Like he either he joined as a consultant or I joined as a consultant, then to a developer, then whatever you see his iterations, a similar iteration would be seen on my uh, profile also, mm -hmm. but completely with a different projects and with a different set of things. So I I was a witness of his career, like what what all it took for us to be today is like he uh, we always thought architecture is never. Uh, uh, architecture uh, can be practiced only if your bread and butter is assured. So, to reach to that stage and then to do what you want to do, it takes a lot of time. Let you, you you'll be studying a lot of topics in college, but if you are not doing uh, what is required in college, that extra five years it will take you when you are in practice for sure. Yes, uh, that is there. Matlab, it requires time for you to digest. This is not like a software guy like aware at in Infosys like. Uh, a very fresher who gets recruited in the campus uh, recruitment would be paid at par with an architect who's got paid at five years or seven years of experience. It's a fast growing field, but this field requires a lot of patience and you need to wait for the opportunity to come in. Now, today we are at a stage where like clients approach us and we are in a position to say with your intu intuitive skills, like whether to do this project or not. So it took really 20 years of time to be at this uh, point or stage. Thank you very much. Uh, I it was also a surprise for me the way you had started about the success. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, a unique collection of uh, path to yeah. success. <laughs> I don't think it's the right time here, but uh, we both we both worked in uh, um, called Ajmera Mayfair. Shamant joined there, and after that I joined there. So we <laughs> he was working on India projects. I was working on international. That was the only difference. But within one year, you know, I went there. He joined another firm. So that was that was uh, 2007, and after that, we now we are working Geetam now. So after 10 years, huh? more than 10 years, 12 years, we are together now. Right. And there is a lot of learning happened. There is a lot of learning happened from the friends itself, the friends and the colleagues. Really, uh, that helped me a lot in individual careers. So. Uh, th this is the lifestyle of architect though it is the, the timeline may change slightly but most of the 
people will travel in similar way mm. so uh, be prepared to do all these experience all these kind of things networking is very very important and as you said no uh, yes it is a very small world it's a very small world wherever you go somewhere somehow you are connected to that person somewhere yes. is connected actually uh, sunil sir's friend banu sir i met him in byram yeah. <laughs> i don't know since 2007 i met him yes so architect narsimham i met him in byram yes now it's it's a very small world small world yes good <coughs> okay yes nikda i think uh, we should uh, say formal word of thanks to muktesh and we can close and before that no yeah definitely a word of thanks from me muktesh it was a wonderful presentation thank and, you sir uh, <coughs> the journey is uh, uh, very revealing itself and i hope uh, all your experience with all this experience no you are guiding your guidance to the students it will be very very successful and thank uh, you sir the students will uh, gain lot from uh, you as a faculty thank you thank you thank you sure i will add a small thing here sir i've been observing teshwar uh, uh, garu from long time we yeah. met uh, in a short period but he is very active open open for ideas or sharing collaboration and in his presentation also it is very evident that he is very adaptive that's what very much required in our profession we need to keep on adapt to the changes of technology or the demanding times or the client uh, taste or the fastness they are looking so all his projects also it is very evident so uh, thank you for sharing your entire journey here and i know how much busy you guys are all of us uh, in fact but pulling time on weekends and sharing your knowledge requires a lot of efforts i really appreciate and thank on behalf of all of us and on behalf of the audience also thank you very much thank you thank you thank you panika Thank you very much. Thank Shrikda, you. you take, take yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, everyone. So I will. Ah, uh, so further as a token of information, uh, Geetam School of Architecture. There will be more webinars coming up uh, next weekend. Also, we will be having uh, webinar zero seven and zero eight where. uh professional and industry experts are going and educators both are going to be a part of this webinar so i would request all the like uh, participants everyone to join our upcoming webinars also so that you all have a broad spectrum of knowledge from other eminent speakers also and i would like to ex express my appreciation to all the participants for taking out their time from their busy schedules and i would also like to thank uh, our uh, director sir g sunil kumar sir kanaka sir uh architect kanaka sir and uh, also all our other core faculty members for being a part of this webinar today and uh, now on behalf of geetam school of architecture i would like to close my remarks and officially announce the end of the webinar wishing you all the future prosperity of all the participating students and i further extend my gratitude to our esteemed speaker for today and all the faculties of architecture hyderabad and visakhapatnam and thank you for your attention stay safe and healthy signing off this is your today's host architect snigdha roy thank you so much thank you thank you snigdha thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you so much thank you